evening. Welcome to episode 10 of In at the Side. I'm Dom Hardman. I'm joined by JK and Scenario Neil. And our guest this evening is Peter Bracken. How are you this evening, Peter? Good. Good, Dom. Yeah, good Good. good to be here. Good to have you. So uh, what's, what's keeping you busy during the lockdown at the moment? Uh, well, two kids. And uh, yeah, uh, pretty much. Um, things haven't changed hugely for me. Um I have a few jobs on the go, but my main job is I'm a full-time carer pretty much for my young lad. My, uh, yeah, young lad um, recently diagnosed with autism. And uh, so we, we kind of took, took the decision about six months ago that I would go pretty much full-time caring. And it's worked out really, really well. So, um, y- yeah, like, so for, for me, the whole homeschooling and all that kind of stuff is... is uh, is nothing different now he, he goes to mainstream school and he's very high functioning so you wouldn't even notice with him but um that's given me um yeah so that it, in that it hasn't changed i have a teenage daughter now who um yeah who's uh yeah so that's uh <laughs> <laughs> that's where at least, at is least the less you say about that the better because she may re- listen to this or something <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no it's about rugby so she's not going to be listening <laughs> <laughs> no and um obviously um obviously coming from a, a father who has uh, someone with down syndrome and autism obviously i know how tough that can be and oh. it, it's busy it's full time it's 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 keeping yourself uh, in well, keeping them enthused and uh, making sure that, that they go don't, don't go uh, haywire, especially during lockdown. Yeah, all, all right, yeah. Oh, it's, um, ah, but it's great. Like, you know, I'm sure a lot of people are just, uh, you know, a lot of people are getting to spend more time with their kids, which is a really great thing. Yeah. Well, yeah it's quite, it's quite mad. Imagine got Autism Awareness uh, shirt on today. So that's... Uh, oh, oh. Yeah. Well, I was going to... Take the jigsaws. I saw on Facebook the other day is that you know, the young kids, we, the three of us, we've got we're all young kids or kids of different ages, but the kids won't actually remember the scary virus and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. All they'll remember is, do you remember that time where mum and dad were home with us for a month? Yeah. And a film that played with us and all that sort of stuff. So there are positives to come out of this. And obviously when we come out the other end, I think we're all, Jesus, I think we're going to drink the country dry. Yes. Um, it's, uh, it's me. I don't know anyone else, but uh, there won't be any. There won't be a drop of Guinness left in Ireland after all this. Oh my God! Absolutely. And, and I think the world. You know the turning point between when people said, "Okay, I don't know whether this is serious," and "Oh my God, this is life threatening," yeah. is the day that Ireland shut its pubs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that the proverbials hit the fan. Yeah. And it was literally <laughs> three days before St Patrick's Day, and we closed. So. It kind of hit home. Oh fuck me! This is serious. <laughs> <laughs> what, what were your uh, What were your Paddy's Day celebrations like this year then? Oh, uh, zero. Yeah. Um, no. Virtual. Virtual. <laughs> virtual. <laughs> virtual. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. Virtual. That, that was pretty much it. There was um, no. I. Uh, I actually. Um, just personally. Um, yeah. I don't. I. I never really drank much, but. Um, um, I do love a, a pint of creamy Guinness, and the old canned stuff doesn't cut it. So no. I prefer just yeah, just leave leave it so. I'll catch up though. I'll catch up once. <laughs> <laughs> I think most will. I'd love to be a fly on the wall when you do, Peter. I tell yeah. you. I, <laughs> I want to be involved. <laughs> right. I want to be there. Yeah. To uh, have a dodgy trip to Castle Island. Power, guys. Excellent. Well, we'll take you up on that. We'll hold you to that. Um, no, we mentioned briefly earlier that um, before your rugby career, or, or it may have been during, you were a cage fighter, or you did a lot of uh, that sort of thing. Did you did you compete at a high level in, in that sort of thing? Or was it... um, yeah, no, well, I suppose, um, yeah, I retired. Well, I didn't retire. I never officially retired from rugby. And uh, I do play the odd uh, charity game here and there. But um, no I t- finished up playing special <laughs> rugby. <laughs> and... Um, yeah, it, it, literally there was no um, there was no contracts left, and I kind of I'd, I'd lost the uh, love of the game a little bit, mm-hmm. and uh, I didn't want to go back playing rugby, and so yeah, uh, I was going to the gym for about a year, getting bored of that, and uh, just happened to um, so this is a year after finishing up playing rugby, uh, so I'm 34 at the time, and uh, I was uh, filling up. 
petrol in the uh, at the filling station 11 o'clock at night during the winter dark the next thing this like boy racer car comes in it's going boom 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 you know this crack and these about five tough looking uh tough looking eastern european lads get out of the car you know and they start staring at me and i was thinking oh, all right okay i don't know what's good you know What's going to happen here but i kind of stayed calm and uh, they were only going into the shop but like literally they were all staring at me as they were going and uh, i was wondering what the hell was going on so i thought it might thought it might uh, kick off but um uh, one of them shouted over he says oh um uh, ears uh, you uh, you do wrestling you do wrestling so because obviously, you know, he was having a good, they were having a good look at my uh, cauliflower ears, like, so they were obviously impressed with the cauliflower. So, um, yeah, no, I said, uh, do rugby, uh, play rugby. He said, oh, yeah, oh, rugby, love rugby, it's fantastic. Uh, we've just started up an MMA club here in Casabar, my hometown, like, it's only, it's a tiny, it's maybe 5,000 people. But, uh, so, yeah, so, do you want to come? So, uh, give it a go. So, I did, and... Uh, I went down and I uh, absolutely loved it, loved it. And so uh, I only competed at amateur level, but yeah, I pretty much got to an All-Ireland final. And, you know, so uh, and I was in the cage three months after start, uh, starting it off, which wouldn't have been very long. But yeah. I suppose I had uh, two advantages. I had an advantage of being a professional athlete for so long, mm. so my conditioning was good. And secondly, uh, the wrestling side of things kind of came naturally, you know, yeah. But, oh, my God, my striking, like my boxing was horrendously bad, you know. So I really had to work on that. But, yeah, yeah, so I got into the MMA and had uh, a couple of fights and I, I enjoyed it. That's so have you seen uh, another, ex, another ex-Wasp is uh, moving towards uh, Bellator? Yes. How do you, how do you fare his uh, chances in uh, MMA? Yeah, I think I think he could go very, very well. Um yeah, there's a lot of a lot of skills that can transfer over, and basically the wrestling. He shouldn't have a problem with wrestling. He shouldn't have a problem with takedowns. He shouldn't have a problem with defending. He'll probably have to work. Well, he is. He's, you know, and he seems to be taking it properly seriously. Mm-hmm. And if he's doing that, he has a very good chance because you know he's still an athlete and he's still a unit, and he'll he'll do well. Um, I would have no problem uh, coming out with retirement for a showdown. Oh, oh. Well, no. You heard it here, oh. man. We will have to uh, let the powers that be know that. Wow. Brad, yes. We are speaking to Alex Payne on Wednesday, so perhaps we can mention it and try and get a, a date sorted. <laughs> <laughs> Not only because I want to do it, but I could do it with the cash, to be honest. <laughs> I could do it with the cash. <laughs> I'm fucking broke. Like, what what, your, uh, what you would your yourself. music be? What? what? What would your walkout music be? Oh, a live from Pearl Jam. Nice, good choice. Great choice. Great choice. Yeah, so Great we're choice. all still alive anyway, you know. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I haven't told anyone that. That's been on the back of my mind now for about six months, pretty much since um, since he said he's he's doing it. Like, and I know, like within the first two days, like a couple of guys had called him out, you know, and but he was never going to take those fights because. Um, like the the guys were like the rugby players to throw haymakers and stuff, but that's not you know he wants to do it properly. So, but I don't think any rugby player who has an MMA MMA background has called him out. And um, I don't really want to go down the road of the whole um, you know blase bullshit about it. But and I am forty two at the time, but. <laughs> Uh, I am for, and he's still, you know, he's, he, you know, look, fitness and all that, he'd have massive advantages mm. over me. But uh, I, I know James from back in the day, and he was only a young guy at the time, but um, he knows I can go a little bit psycho. I was going uh, to mention that. I was going to say, I've got an Irish friend, and uh, is it is it across the nation that it's, you know, just fiery, fiery guys uh, being Irish, or is it, do you think that would help you? Yeah, I think so. Well, it's. Um, <laughs> It's, uh, no, it's, well, for me, like, yeah, I think there's a natural kind of fieriness there, all right, yeah, um, and I suppose, but, um, yeah, yeah, I suppose, like, the fighting Irish and all that, uh, yeah, it, it kind of might be a little bit of a, a, a natural thing, um, 
But uh, but fighting, fighting, and actually competing, like like MMA is a sport. Like anyone can throw around haymakers and stuff like that. But um, you know, um, but yeah, in all seriousness, like, and I haven't yet. So yeah, yeah, I have. I've never, I've never said this publicly. But look, and I'm not fit. But you know, look, I I still do a bit of grappling and stuff like that just to keep fit. But. You know, uh, six months of training after this uh, virus. Um, I think I think most of WAS fans, I think we could sell out the Rico. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm, I'm down to see if we can make that happen. I'm seeing, I'm seeing pound sign after pound sign on this. Oh, big time. <laughs> We're taking this to the top. <laughs> well, uh, wow. we'll see, you see if we can get it plugged in by with Alex Payne on, uh, on our on call. Wednesday, we'll mention it. <laughs> 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 Going back to obviously your rugby career, um, you, you know you played uh, front row, I believe back row as well for Wasps at one point as well uh, in the past. Um, just a quick, um, I mean, going back, I'm old school. I remember scrums when scrums were scrums and used to have a run up of about at least, at least a meter each, and whoever hit hardest uh, generally would win most of the scrums that match because you knew you were in for a good game. Yeah. Now, do you? Do you miss those that style of scrummaging uh, in the game? Do you think there's a place for it anymore? Or do you agree with the new laws that have come in place to protect the players um, and that sort of thing? Yeah, uh, I 100% agree with all the rules. I think it's the best change of rules World Rugby have ever made. Mm-hmm. Um, and just for safety reasons, if nothing else. And look, it was... It was great crack. It was great fun standing two meters apart and absolutely <laughs> smashing against each other. Yeah. But it was getting really, really dangerous, you know. And you know, uh, you know, at least forty percent to scr- no more. I think it was sixty percent of scrums hit the deck, you know. So, you know, it was only a matter of time before you know, you know, uh, things were going to get, get really bad. Good, especially at professional level, lads were getting bigger, stronger, faster, all the rest. Like I can't yeah. imagine guys hitting now. Like, you know, yeah. you know, um, it, it was just going one way. So, the, but what the, what World Rugby have done is they've kept the scrummaging, mm-hmm. but have taken out the danger. Yeah. Or, yeah, the vast majority of the danger. So a lot of the uh, older guys um, would say it's more akin to scrummaging back in their day, like guys maybe in their 60s, 70s now. So I think it's a nice, um, like, uh, 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 yeah, as, um, like, uh, as you just said there, like, it was a big smash. It was all about the hit. If you got a good hit, happy days. If you didn't get a good hit, you were struggling. But now, no. yeah. yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. exactly. But now you get a hit. Like, look, okay, it's short, but you get a boom. And if you're not in a good position, you're going to get dicked. And mm. you, you have a chance. But, you know, it's a wrestle. And rugby or scrum should be a wrestle. And, um it's definitely a lot safer and the ball is out and, and gone a lot better all the time. So, you know, there's still the contest. Um, and looking back on it, looking back, like you see the odd clip, not even of myself, but you see a scrum like from, te- you know, seven, eight years ago. I said, Oh, f- wow. Jesus. Yeah. It was really whatever. Um, and a car crash and all the rest. And you're thinking now, yeah, you still, yeah, you have, you have the competition, but the safety is there. So, yeah, I think it's a very good rule. That's fair. But I think, the, sorry, go on, Neil. Just go on, Neil. Nah, nah, is, is, I think that I agree with you, your statement there. Yes, some of the laws that come in are, are brilliant to protect the players and, and keep people safe. But, <coughs> excuse me, how many laws have to change before they go too far? You know, how many, like, yeah. from my point of view, being old school, going in, like you say, with the, with the run-up scrums and all that sort of stuff. And now it seems every single player... Uh, scrub our feeds and things like that. It seems they're taking a lot of the, a lot of the wrestling away from the scrums. It seems to be a foregone conclusion now. You know, it seems very rare that someone will win a scrum against a head. Is is that? Do you think there's a danger of that? Do you think that they could almost take the scrummage out of the game, but with too many laws? Well, yeah. Well, there's always that possibility. And are are is that what they're trying to do? Is it? Another- I, I, I don't know if that's what they're trying to do. I'm just being devil's advocate and just saying that yeah. know, if that was the case, um, do you think it's at risk of, of sort of ruining the game or, or certainly ruining the forward side of the game? Yeah, well, if, if, if there's no scrum, there's no rugby. 
it's mm-hmm. it, you know it's the defining feature uh otherwise it's just rugby league so you know i think it's that fine line i think rugby, world rugby they want to make the scrum as safe but more so probably as attractive as possible yeah. so but not turn it into a farce like uh rugby league because they know they have a better product than rugby league um yeah, yeah. so it's um yeah I, I do you know what if if, if they if they ref to put in a lot more strict you could mm-hmm. get a lot more turnovers yeah so if the ball was put in straighter the like the hooker needs to hook okay so if you're an opposite, you know this. If you have the opposition, um, you have a chance there when the basically the hooker lifts his foot to to strike. Mm-hmm. So you you know there's a competition there. Whereas if he can just dig in and the ball is basically thrown into the second row, mm-hmm. you know it. Yeah, it's a little bit too easy. But yeah. I think I think there's more scrums. I think a lot of coaching, you know, people have realized that the scrum is very important and you only, you never really realize that you have a good scrum, but you know straight away when you have a bad scrum. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, you know, like the bat and the backs, the backs know it, like, you know, you know like, because the quality of ball is crap or whatever. I, I think, you know, um, I, I think just I think there's more opportunities to to have a go at, at an opposition scrum that maybe teams are 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 taking and you know certainly if I was if I was coaching a team if I was head coach I'd be putting a lot of pressure on at um, I, I I think it might be now that you know I'm kind of it's going through my head I don't think enough coaches know enough about scrummaging so they kind of don't put enough time into it yeah on defense or attack so a lot of coaches and probably a lot of teams are happy enough okay we win our ball you win your ball yeah until you get a front row coach who doesn't care about uh, winning or losing just cares about demolishing demolishing scrums then all of a sudden um you might have to look after your scrum you know so there's a lot of things in there i i I think there's there are opportunities to 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 scrum yeah. Um, and teams may, may not be taking and again i suppose it depends on the level well it doesn't really uh, referees too um some referees will allow a contest i it, it bugs me that when the ball is at the back immediately the referees because they're normally backs or ex backs are going oh get the ball out get the ball no he didn't have to let the ball out he can yeah. he can leave it in there and we can go for a pushover we can we can do a bit of work here you know so I think everyone, everyone has to, um, yeah, I, 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 yeah, no, I, I still love the scrum. I think, I think just a, a lot of, a lot we can do with the scrum, but um, yeah, um, if you're allowed to scrum, if you're allowed to scrum. Yeah, perfect. So obviously, uh, we talk about a lot of uh, law changes and stuff. Has that changed how you do coach the scrum? You know, you talk about, um, you hear that, a lot of teams aren't live scrummaging in training sessions anymore. They're just hitting hitting the scrum, you know, the scrum machine. You know, in your opinion, is it always better to have a live scrum or really sort of hone in your technique and your body position against the machine a couple of times a week instead? Yeah, um, yeah, I, th- I, I think a bit of everything. Um, you know, if if there was only one thing, like if you could only do one thing a week, like if you only literally had two minutes, so well, you'd you'd hit two live scrums, okay? Yeah. Um, you know, there's nothing beats live, but at the same time, if guys don't know what they're doing individually, so I in my sessions I do an awful lot on body position and individual stuff and small units, so like one v one, three v one, five v five, and then. Uh, build it up. I do find the scrum machines really good for timing, and yeah. and then you hit. So you know, and again, I have a, I um, I use a, a silver the silver fern pneuma, or a pneumatic machine which pushes back against you. So you can really put a lot of pressure on and um, and lock out, and it moves side to side and all that tight head loose head. So you know. Um, 
it, it's a great tool. Like hitting a big weight of a machine that's not giving you any feedback. I, I don't think those old fashioned sleds or old fashioned round machines are, I think they're pretty much obsolete now because you're not getting, like you can get a hit or two just to get a bit of timing. Um, but I, I, I would find that, yeah, if, if you're 16 guys go live, but generally, uh, you know, most clubs, most clubs don't have 16 players knocking around. Like they're lucky to have seven or eight guys, you know, maybe yeah. nine. So you really do need a scrum machine. So, that's where the hydraulic machine comes in. I think you need, you can get a bit of, you do need a bit of resistance if you can, and it takes less of a toll on the body. But, you know, this, okay, the odd hour, one hour mad live scrum is in session, you know, maybe once or twice a year is brilliant to get everyone into it, but you can't do that every week. So, you know, I think, you know, how much time have you for scrums every week? You might have 10, 15 minutes, so you have to use quality. So, you know, I, I, you know, if you only have 15 minutes, my thing would be to five minute kind of individual stuff, five minute mini unit, and then five minute as, as, as a full pack. And that's either, you know, so five scrums, two on the machine and three live, happy days, if the quality is good. Perfect. Perfect. Ideal. I've got a. Um, you, know, you might have heard Dom call me Scenario. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah. uh, there we go. Sorry, sorry, say that Dom's, again. I didn't quite catch that. Um, sorry. Dom, Dom's uh, started calling me Scenario Neil. Uh, really <laughs> I keep posing scenarios to our guests. Now, All right. Okay. One that's come up a lot recently, um, which you can imagine, is, is regarding COVID 19. Now, here's the scenario, right? You're locked in a house with one player you used to play with, right? Um, now, it's for two weeks. You're not allowed out of the house. People are bringing you food. You literally are locked down with this person for two weeks. Who would make it an absolute living hell? Who would you? Who would be the least? The person you would least like to be on lockdown with for two weeks? Oh, a living hell. A living hell. Oh. Ah. Ooh. Who's the most... Who would get me nerves? It's a big call now. Uh, who would drive? <laughs> It'd have to be a back who's like a bit of a fairy and, you know, <laughs> is into makeup and stuff. You know, you do used to play with me. Heidi. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, who? Oh, <laughs> Too many to choose from. Although, I just. <laughs> God, you've already called out James Haskell tonight, so yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is yeah, this is, yeah. is going to be a patch on that. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, well yeah, um, no, James would be good fun now. Um, I know, well, everyone who's oh, this is this is a tough one because you lose a friend now, you you lose, you know, our, oh, our, in the band. You know, right. Yeah, the way I um, pose it this way is because if if you get on really well with someone, but you know they're a bit of a nightmare, you'd always shout to throw them under the bus. And uh, we've had some very interesting answers from different guests about, you know, who they'd be uh, sharing with and why. But you reckon basically any of the backs you've played with, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, leave it at that. Leave it at that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so we won't say anyone like Owen Redden. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know Red, Red, Red would have good old banter uh, uh, and good conversation. Um, what about uh, Lauren? What would it be like being with Lawrence Delalio? Ah, oh, that'd be brilliant. That'd be, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh. And if you had to go on an all-day bender, as Alex Good did recently when they won the the, uh, the, the lab. Cup, uh, who who would you, who would you choose to go with you? Ooh, uh, probably Joe Ward. Right. Okay. Yeah, he, Joe. He'd drink for drink, would he? Yeah, he he likes to drink, and uh, yeah, he can keep going, and doesn't doesn't get messy. You know, so he, yeah, but well, uh, yeah, yeah, it's good, good, good crack, good crack when he gets going. Um, yeah, uh, not afraid to uh, jump down and do uh, rep out a couple of press ups as well um, during, you know, during a night out. So we used to have a thing was um, we'd call, you call 10. So that means everyone had to drop and do 10, no matter where you were. So lads would be looking for the most awkward situation or whatever. So, 
like if a bloke is going up, chatting up a good-looking girl, as soon as he arrives over, he has to drop for 10, and, you know, that's him <laughs> done and dusted. <laughs> Any kind of opportunity, so... Brilliant. Yeah, Joe. Fair play. So sticking on the uh, topic of uh, socials, what is the best team or squad you've been involved with social-wise? Because obviously, you know, you're with the Barbarians, with the boys at Wasps, you know, what, what's some of the yeah. best rugby anecdotes you can probably tell us without maybe getting some or yourself into uh, into a bit of trouble. Trouble, yeah, yeah. Probably better chance to get myself into trouble <laughs> than uh, the lads. Um, well, professional, uh, professional rugby-wise, uh, wasps. Like, just the team, the whole team spirit and everything there was just immense. And um, when I got there, like, I, I didn't realise, like, it was... It was Play hard, tra- you know, train hard, play hard, and get on the piss hard or whatever. Everything you do is, <laughs> you know, yeah. so... You've got to be Keegan as your coach, didn't you? So, <laughs> you yeah, <know>. exactly. <laughs> it was absolute, And you had the likes of Dan Leo, Lawrence Delalio, you had Hask. It was yeah. an absolute... Club, yeah. Club yeah. Team. <laughs> I can, yeah, I can imagine what that team would have been like after winning the Heineken Cup. Ah, oh, Janie, yeah. Oh, brilliant. No, the Heineken, oh, it's funny. I know I don't want to go on a downer, but the Heineken Cup wasn't all it was cracked up to be. In really? the end, like, yeah, there was very little banter because it, it was a Sunday night and Twickenham no. basically closed down at half ten. No. You, you and, it's fine. Yeah, but uh, by all accounts, uh, the players knew that. So the club had nothing kind of organised, which is a bit of a letdown. But the next day, all the, like the lads you had just mentioned, uh, they we had an all there uh, organised for the next day. But unfortunately, I was on a, on, I was on a plane the next morning to Argentina with the Irish squad on uh, for for a tour over there, uh, which and I never got capped, so I missed out on. Um, Missed out on a, uh, an absolute jolly. So that all day on the Sunday, which I missed out on, was supposed to be just phenomenal. So anyway, but uh, yeah, I've got the medal anyway, so I'm, uh, I'm happy. Yeah. Well, so that's, yeah, probably, that's probably that, that Wasp team, 2006, 2007, with yourself included, probably was one of the best teams Wasps have ever had, uh, in my opinion. Obviously, you had the likes of Cipriani coming through uh, through his role of, of, of playing fullback and, and yeah. the Three. You had Lawrence Delalio, who's an absolute stalwart. Phil Vickery. Yeah. You guys yeah. had an absolutely amazing team. Obviously, I'm guessing you've been watching Wasps as of late. By the back end of the season, they've done a lot better. Um, but what, where do you see was the start of the season? And obviously, the last couple of seasons have been a bit rocky. Where, where have you seen the issues been uh, in the uh, most recent team? Yeah, yeah. Well, I suppose I have to admit I haven't really been taking as much interest in rugby in general as I I would have. So, you know, I wouldn't be as um, up to speed. Like I really, yeah, since 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 I got into the MMA, it's kind of, um, I, 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 I would sit down and watch an MMA fight before I watch a rugby game, which is, mm-hmm. is, is really? fun. Yeah, yeah, I would, but it's not that I don't like, but I still love rugby. Like, if someone says uh, you can only have one, oh, it's rugby every time, you know. Yeah. Um, but look, I, I'd keep an eye on it, I'd watch watch the highlights and stuff, and um, uh, you know, I suppose there's um. There's a lot going on. I don't think, you know, maybe, like, I'm on a rugby show and I should know a little bit more, but I, I, I don't think I know enough to really... Hey, don't worry. I, 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 about about it. It. I, know, I know nothing about rugby whatsoever. All I've got is scenarios. That's all I've got. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I'm, but guessing you, I'm, I'm guessing like, you keep an eye on the up and coming, obviously, in the Premiership and obviously with England, etc. You, you keep an eye on the up and coming... Uh, props in the Premiership and and, and uh, the UK wide. Who do you see at the moment um, in the UK is kind of the, the the in props at the moment and in the in the front row? Yeah, uh, I, I I really like Ellis Genge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think he has an awful lot of. Uh, did I pronounce his name if that properly? Get, um, uh, yeah, he, yeah, <laughs> uh, I. I just think he, uh, you know, he has all the skills around the field, and he's, um, 
Yeah, he's a good scrummager. He's a, he's a very, very good footballer, and he has, seems to have his head screwed on and uh, and a good lad, you know. And and uh, you know, um, and Joe Marler, like you can't get away. Like Joe is is a fine player, and you know the impact he made in that World Cup final. You know, it, it was just he he was a game changer. Now it didn't go England's way, but you know. Um, yeah, and he, he's been solid for a long, long time, you know. And another, uh, yeah, we have a few characters in the front row, especially at Loosehead, you know. <laughs> you have to be a character in the front row, don't you, personally? You ah, know. you do, yeah. To be in that kind of proximity, yeah, you definitely. have to be a big, burly bloke. So you have to, uh, you have to certainly be, uh, you know, good at talking to people. Um, in terms of props, what about, um, obviously, you touched on the World Cup final. Um, obviously, Carl Sinclair got, uh, you know, was out within minutes. Do you think... That had a massive effect on the match. Do you think if he'd have stayed on, it'd have been a different result? Because I think that's what a lot of the the press were saying at the time. Yeah, I don't think if he stayed on, I don't think it would have made any difference. No. Just me personally. Um, uh, they'd struggled in the scrum, and I think they would have struggled with or without him. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I do find, and and who knows, because only only the guys in the squad will ever know. But I used to, what used to get to annoy me when I was uh, playing was everything was fine if you're in the, on the starting fifteen, and like you got ninety five percent of the reps in line out scrums everything during the week. But if you're on the bench, you didn't. Like you got literally, you know. If you do 100 lineouts a week, you get five. Yeah. You know, and I think, you know, um, and I don't know whether that has changed much. Like, I know any team I'm on, there's literally, it doesn't, if you're on the, if you're on the 30, but if you're definitely on the 23, um, everyone gets equal time during it. Because, you, you know, you could be off the bench in one minute, you know? So, definitely. yeah, exactly. You know, so how, how often does it happen that um, a hooker comes off New hooker on, first line out, missed throw. Generally speaking, 90% of the time, that new hooker coming on, he could be a world-class player. He could have been starting the week before. Mm. But he's he, he may have got maybe two reps in, in the whole week, whereas the other hooker's got 150. So, yeah. you know, and, and with co- it, it just beggars belief sometimes with the coaching that everything is planned to an absolute T. But at the same time, you have your 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 prop on the bench or your hooker on the bench, who is getting five lineout reps a week, whereas the starting hooker is getting 150. So I don't know how many reps or how many reps like the, you know uh, Dan Cole had that week with that scrum, you know, or with the guy behind him, that unit, like you know that whole unit, like your your hooker, your your flanker, and your lock behind you you know um and they'll say oh well they you know to play the, the 50 caps together well maybe so but you know um how many reps did they have that week mm-hmm. you know and you know again england scrum Eng- england have a fantastic scrum like they had no problem in the scrum and i uh up to that i didn't think um they may have took their eye off the ball like uh, by all accounts south africa pinpointed okay this is an area we can attack. Like England are strong here, but they're strong everywhere. Like England have a, g- a great team. How can we win? Okay, let's target the scrum. We have to target something, and they really did. Mm-hmm. You know, and they went after the scrum. So I don't think um, it would have made much difference. But the scrum made a big. The scrum itself made a difference in that game. Mm-hmm. I just find that South Africa completely shut us down. I say us in terms of England, obviously. Yeah. The week before, we did exactly the same to the All Blacks. But I think that was half the problem, is that yeah. everyone expected us to win, including Eddie Jones, including the England team. It was yeah. a complete role reversal from the week before, where no one expected us to win whatsoever. Yeah. And there yeah. was no pressure on. Yeah. So, fair play to South Africa. I think you know they, they played us to a tee, and, and they deserved to win it in the end. But um, Yeah, but it was a close game. It was still a mm-hmm. close game, like, you know, and... England probably had their worst performance and we're in, you know, we're in the game in the World Cup final. So, (coughs) it's those small little things, but it's it's so difficult. I think the higher you go, like putting two world-class performances in in a row seems to be difficult, even for the All Blacks. Yeah. You know, and that's what the World Cup 
kind of showed up that like South Africa scraped by Wales. Mm. So which set them up for the World Cup final, you know, and Eng- England had one of the greatest games ever the week yeah. before, like, you know, and they needed a set. Like, I don't remember a time when, like, you had an unbelievably brilliant performance two weeks in a row, like even yeah. from the All Blacks. And what makes the All Blacks, I suppose, with their re- winning record good is that they will re- win a lot of games without playing well, mm. you know. But um, our, you know, are any other team that good? But then, you know, so it's um, mm. oh, that was a, that was a tough. I I thought England were go, going to win, but yeah, mm. cheapers, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's rugby for you. <laughs> that is rugby. That is yeah. rugby, yeah. yeah. But uh, we get back. Like, there's a lot of good teams. You know, look, Ireland, we had a very good patch there for a number of years, and we're going through a dip at the moment, you know. And uh, hopefully we'll get back fighting. You know, um, Joe Smith did wonders for Ireland, but we kind of petered off for about a year. We peaked, you know, a year earlier. If the World Cup was a year before... You know, we, we had a really good chance, but England peaked for the World Cup. So, um, yeah, it's it, it's very hard. It's very hard to stay at the top, for, you know, yeah. at that level. Yeah, for sure. Well, uh, perfect. Thank you very much for coming on the show, Peter. Uh, right. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you. And yeah. uh, I'm sure we'll have you back soon. And uh, After the, after the uh, fight with uh, James Haskell, we'll definitely... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, that's a world exclusive. Yeah, well, it's yeah. a world exclusive. Uh, so, well, 20% of an EP, he's obviously right. that's, that's the normal term, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Lads, if he could do all the work, do all the promotion, uh, <laughs> you just, you we'd just all, turn up for and get paid. Yeah. We've got that old video, that's fine. Yeah. We'll okay. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for your time, Peter. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. thank you very much, Peter. Thanks, lads. I Cheers, had a great Peter. time. Really enjoyed this. Thanks for having me, guys. No worries.